I remember seeing a news story a couple of years ago about a man named Tim who was driving his vehicle along Daytona Beach in Florida when he saw something very unusual. He saw a minivan driving into the ocean. And as he got closer to the minivan, he had his window rolled down and he heard something coming from inside the minivan. He heard the sound of children screaming. And so he stopped his vehicle and he ran, he ran toward the minivan and that's when he noticed that there was, there was a woman inside driving the minivan and there were children inside screaming. And so he threw open the side door and that's when the children said, our mom is trying to kill us. And so he jumped into action, but as soon as he did, what the children said apparently got mom's attention because that's when she hit the accelerator and she went driving right into the ocean even more quickly. Tim was able to pull out one of the children and then another one and another person who happened to be walking by, a lifeguard, jumped into action and, and also helped, jumped into the minivan and pulled a, pulled a third one out and they got everyone out just as the minivan went completely underwater and everyone was safe. It turns out that that woman who was driving the minivan was in an abusive relationship. She was in a relationship with somebody who abused her and she wanted to be free from it. She wanted to be free from its pain. But so far, everything that she had tried to get out of that, to be free from it, it, it hadn't worked. And that hurt. So much so, that the thought of dying in the ocean with her children made her feel better than going back to that relationship again. This week, we will be looking at God's Word and we will be applying God's Word to individuals who might have an idea of how that woman felt. We'll be applying God's Word to those who know what it's like to suffer abuse. And so that might not be you. But that doesn't mean that you don't need to know what God's Word says to those who have been abused. According to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, one in three women and one in four men in the United States experience rape, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner. In other words, by somebody who knows them really, really well. A very general definition of abuse would be uh, a pattern of behaviors used by one partner to maintain control over another partner in a relationship. Or maybe to say it another way, you've been hurt to such a degree that you no longer feel safe. Or to say it another way, somebody who was supposed to love you didn't. And there are different types of abuse. There is physical abuse. There is verbal abuse. There's emotional abuse and financial abuse. There's sexual abuse, social abuse, and even spiritual abuse. And do you know that there are various words in the Bible that describe somebody who's been abused? Words like broken, wounded, crushed, afflicted, oppressed, stricken, pierced. And if those words, words could describe you, then know that you're not alone. Because they also describe Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 53, those words are used to describe what Jesus went through. Except while you use those words, reluctantly, in other words, something was done to you that you wish would have never been done to you. Jesus assigned those words to him by choice. By choice. He was willingly abused. And why? Because he wanted everyone who's been broken. Everyone whose will whose confidence, whose security, whose joy has been broken. 
to know that they have a friend who knows how you feel and who cares enough to do something about it and who will not let it get the best of you. That's why he invites you in the Gospel of Matthew. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This week we'll talk about how that happens for you who have been abused. If you or someone you know is suffering from abuse, please go to timeofgrace.org backslash abuse to find more resources and information for getting help.